Halo has been the cornerstone franchise face of Xbox for the past 16 years, and is currently in its most dire position since its inception in November of 2001. Originally created by the studio Bungie, Halo developed into a worldwide phenomenon, becoming one of the highest selling gaming franchises of all time. And on a personal level, Halo has been the cornerstone for me in my gaming life since the initial release of Halo 1, and has up until today been one of my all-time favourite gaming franchises. But after the abomination of a game that was Halo 5 Guardians, a game that pushed away a massive portion of the fanbase, both for the single player and the multiplayer communities, Halo is now in its most desperate position ever. So today, I want to discuss the future of Halo, how it got to where it is today, and can it move forward and save itself from disaster? Let's first look back at the events that led the Halo franchise to this point. In 2010, after nearly a decade of successful years at the helm of the Halo franchise, Bungie released their final Halo game, Halo Reach. In that previous decade, Bungie had changed the way first person shooters are played, for multiplayer games and for amazing storytelling in gaming. But when the time came for Bungie to move on from Halo, it was Microsoft that was not ready to end their best-selling exclusive. So, understandably so, Microsoft Studios formed a new game studio to continue to develop Halo games, known as 343 Industries. 343 Industries' tenure with the Halo franchise has not been as universally loved and impactful as Bungie's was. They started safe with their release of Halo Anniversary, a remaster of Halo 1 in November of 2011, exactly 10 years after the game's initial release, bringing both old and new fans to the root of this legendary franchise. But 343 were preparing for their first big step as a company, their first original Halo game, Halo 4, which released the following year in 2012. The game split the fan base with some, including myself, who loved much of what the game had to offer with its beautiful graphics, an interesting and diverse story that still felt like a Halo game, and I felt it was a nice step forward for the franchise. Though some fans did not agree, especially those in the multiplayer sphere of the community, which I myself am not a major part of, honestly, and I'm not the right person to probably go into detail of the many things wrong with the multiplayer aspects of Halo 4 and beyond, though I certainly do delve into the multiplayer in some small doses. However, I digress. Let's fast forward to 2014, and 343 Industries releases Halo The Master Chief Collection, a game in which had all four of Halo's Master Chief games re-released for the Xbox One, including a remastered Halo 2 Anniversary Edition. The game also included dozens and dozens of old-school multiplayer maps and playlists that spanned all of the games. However, the release was a bit of a disaster to say the least, with the multiplayer servers being almost unusable to players for months. It was six months before I myself even got into a multiplayer game on this collection. This was what I call the omen of what was to come. You see, the following year, 343 Industries released their second original Halo title, Halo 5 Guardians, the game that changed everything for Halo in my opinion, and pushed its seemingly downwards trajectory to a whole new low. For me, no game has ever disappointed me or upset me more than Halo 5 Guardians did. It's a game that took such a left turn in its direction and made so many decisions that I, even to this day, cannot completely wrap my brain around. How any developer that was at 343 Industries could have thought for a second certain decisions they made for this game were a good idea. I am mostly a fan of Halo for its story and its campaign. To me, the original trilogy of Halo and its deep lore and world building is the greatest world ever created in video games. To me, Master Chief is the foundation to that entire story arc that I've been invested in since I played Halo 1 for the first time as a six-year-old. So going into Halo 5 Guardians, I was already wary of the fact that we were going to also be playing as another character in the campaign. But I had some faith that there would be a good enough balance to mainly play as our main character Chief and a little of this new side character. I played through the entire campaign of Halo 5 in the first day of its release, and it was honestly just one of the most confusing experiences of my life. As things were happening and I slowly realized that Chief had only three missions out of the 15 missions in the campaign, I was just baffled. 
I remember feeling this sickly feeling that Halo and 343 Industries were going in the exact opposite direction with their story than I expected or wanted. I couldn't believe what I was playing. And after time processing it, I realized that this campaign was just an inexcusable piece of trash. With a Thorless story, Thorless mission structure, and characters I just hated from start to finish. Chief was left as an afterthought to this story. And I know I'm not the only person who felt this way, as so many people came out of the community that were enraged by this horrendous campaign that Halo 5 had offered up to us. Even going into the multiplayer, the game was sold on this new Warzone game mode that just turned out to be a clusterfuck of a mess of loot crates and microtransactions. The only saving grace to me that I will give Halo 5 Guardians was its arena multiplayer mode, which for me was genuinely one of the best Halo multiplayer experiences I had had since Halo 3's multiplayer. So what can Halo 6 do to save the franchise? And has 343 Industries learned from their massive mistakes over the past several years? Well, it looks at least some major issues are going to be rectified moving forward, based on what the development team has been saying about the next installment in the Halo saga. So what do we know so far about the forthcoming Halo 6? Halo franchise director Frank O'Connor and head of 343 Industries Kiki Wolfkill gave an interview in 2017 to Game TM Magazine, giving their thoughts on the feedback from Halo 5 and what to make of it moving forward into Halo 6. Frank O'Connor said, quote, We very much realised that people wanted Master Chief's story in Halo 5. We definitely marketed it in a way that we hoped was going to bring surprise, but for some fans, and certainly fans of Master Chief, it was a huge disappointment because they wanted more Chief." End quote. This just goes into another major issue of Halo 5's campaign I haven't even touched on. The marketing was also horrendously misleading, giving the fans a concept of the story being these two Spartans fighting against each other in Chief and Locke, as Locke hunts down a rogue Master Chief. Instead, we got something completely different and totally lacklustre. One of the biggest questions was, for me going into Halo 5, why do we need this new character anyway? Why go away from the character that has been the star of this franchise for over a decade and a half? Well, O'Connor did continue to explain this and say, quote, Chief we tend to think of as a kind of vessel for your adventure, rather than necessarily this major character in the universe. He's really just your entry into the universe, O'Connor said. But people have become attached to him over the last 15 years, and they've started to sort of fill in the gaps that the character deliberately has for gameplay reasons with a genuine emotional attachment. We certainly underestimated that with Halo 5, end quote. Okay, so this is just one of the things that has clearly gone wrong inside the studio of 343 Industries. The lack of self-awareness that makes the Halo franchise great. Of course Chief is more than just a vessel after all this time. The players now know almost everything about him, his backstory and the way he reacts to things and deals with things. The fact he is such a do first, talk later type of person is because of the complexities of his past, as an orphan then being raised to be a Spartan. The Master Chief to me is Halo. The fact that 343 Industries didn't realise that is just ludicrous. But I can only hope that they don't make these same mistakes again, because if they do, I can't see myself ever wanting to play a Halo game again. But from this interview, Frank O'Connor seemed to ease my mind a bit that they won't make these mistakes again. He said, quote, It wasn't that surprising to me, but the volume of Give Us More Chief at the end of Halo 5 was significant, and so I think, if anything, he's slightly more important now than he ever has been, certainly to our franchise. Instead of focusing on bringing new characters into the world and expanding the playable characters, we've sort of shifted the focus a little bit to making the world a little bit more realistic and compelling and, I would say, more fun for players who get to inhabit the Chief in the future, pretty much as they demanded." End quote. O'Connor lastly adds, quote, "...doubling down on Master Chief's story and the amount of focus on him was probably the easiest learning from Halo 5." That was a really simple thing to absorb and embrace, end quote. So I think it's safe to say what we know about Halo 6 is that we'll be playing as the Master Chief again, and he will be the main focus of our story and gameplay, as he should be. For Halo 6 to at least keep the franchise face in chief, we know they're making a sensible and extremely necessary first step in making sure Halo 6 has a solid foundation in its campaign story. Plus the feedback from the multiplayer community, I think Halo can refocus its efforts in the same foundation that made Halo great in the past. 
Expand that arena multiplayer from Halo 5 and make it the focus of Halo 6's multiplayer experience, rather than that waste of time that was Warzone. Trying to reinvent the wheel with established franchises rarely works out, as the balance of new to old is so impossibly complex and differs to each franchise and community. Halo 6's success isn't just important though to the community of millions of Halo players, it's arguably most important to Xbox. The Xbox One has been clearly in dire straits in terms of exclusive content and is desperate for games that can drive their console and future consoles moving forward in terms of selling. With Sony releasing games like Uncharted, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last of Us, just to name a few, Xbox needs their own seller. Halo is not currently in the position to do that for Microsoft at this point, but it could be. Halo 6 needs to do one thing, be honest. 343 Industries needs to be honest with themselves and honest with the marketed audience to the game. They need to be honest with the feedback they received and honest with what Halo is. I don't have all the answers here. I don't know if Halo 6 will save the franchise, but can it? I think so. I think at the very least, it can take a giant leap in the right direction towards saving Halo. They need to go back to the roots of Halo and what it means. Not necessarily exactly how it plays, obviously in the new era of games things have changed, but if you're honest about what the essence of Halo is, then you can build the game's foundation and story on that. Then sell the world on that, honestly. What are we going to get and why is it going to be not just a good game, but a good Halo? I have faith that they're going to keep their word and focus their story and Halo 6 on the Master Chief. And that for me, is a great start.